Kathy's Gatos here. Welcome to 5.2. I'm splitting this in two videos. This video is all about multiplying. So when we're multiplying radicals, the first thing I want to look for is restrictions. If that variable is in the radicand, I need to either state a restriction or state that there is no restriction by stating the variable is an element of the reals. Once I've done that, I'm going to multiply my numbers with numbers and roots with roots but only if those roots have the same index. So I can only multiply square roots with square roots and cube roots with cube roots. And then I'm going to simplify by removing any perfect factors. Your answers always have to be simplified. So when I'm multiplying again, you're going to leave the index alone. So the nth root of a times the nth root of b is the nth root of a times b. Now, I have a little tip here when we're multiplying the square root of the same thing. So see how I have root a times root a? Well, that's just really root a squared, and I know 2 divided by 1 is a to the 1. Well, my tip to avoid doing that extra step is if you have the square root of the same radicand multiplied by twice, so square root twice, root of the same thing times root of the same thing is just the same thing without the root. Now the same thing is true with cube root, but since it's the cube root, three, I have to do it three times. So cube root of the same thing, cube root of the same thing, cube root of the same thing is the same thing without the cube root. So just a little shortcut that might help you. Let's try an example where we're multiplying a monomial by a monomial. So I have this four root three times square root 6. I'm actually just going to rewrite this as 4 root 3 times 1 root 6 because then I can see multiplying my numbers together there's a 1 there. 4 times 1 is 4 and then the root of 3 times 6 is 18. So now that I've combined them together I need to simplify by removing any perfect square factors. So back over here I have this as 4 root and then I'll simplify the 18. So the highest perfect square factor of 18 is 9, and 9 times 2 is 18. So the square root of 9 is 3, times 4 is 12, so it's 12 root 2. So I always check my answer to make sure that I am correct. Since it's just numbers, I can check on the main screen of my calculator, and I see that 4 root 3 times root 6 has the same numeric value as 12 root 2, so I know I did it correctly. Let's try this one. First thing I notice is I have a variable in the root. So either I have a restriction or it's an element of the reals. Either way, I have to state it. So because it is a square root and it's to the exponent of 1, I can't square root a negative. So x has to be greater than or equal to 0. And now I'm ready to go. So I'm going to multiply my numbers together. So negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. And then the root of 2x times 6 is 12x. So now that I've combined them together through multiplication, I just have to simplify them, and I can use my perfect square factors to help me with that. So I have negative 12, and then I'm going to break down 12x. So 12 has a perfect square factor of 4 with 3 left over, and x is to the exponent of 1, so it's not yet a multiple of 2, so it goes in the non-perfect category. So Square root of 4 is 3 times negative 12 is negative 36 times the square root of 3x, where x is greater than or equal to 0. So let's check. Now, because I'm dealing with variables this time, my check happens in the table. So in y1, I have to put my original equation, and in y2, I will put my answer. So original answer. Did I make a mistake here? Oh, I did. See? Good thing I checked. The square root of 4 is 2. Okay, not 3. Ah, I was looking at this 3 here. Okay, so see? Good thing that I checked. So square root of 4 is 2. Negative 12 times 2 is negative 24. Oh my gosh, how silly am I? So negative 24 root 3x where x is greater than 0. If that doesn't show you the power of checking, I don't know what will. Okay, let's do this one here. I'm multiplying a monomial by a binomial. I'm applying the distributive property. So I'm multiplying in here, and then I'm multiplying in here. So negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, times by the cube root of 9 times 12, 108. Negative 3 times positive 5, negative 15, 
the cube root of 9 times 3, 27. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can even put brackets around these so it doesn't look like 6 cubed and 15 cubed. So anytime I have a root other than just square root, I like to throw those brackets on. So I'm going to simplify this, and I'm going to need my perfect cubes to do it. And there we are. So to simplify this, I have to find the highest perfect cube that goes into 108, and that is 27. So 6, there we go, 6 times the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 4. So 27 times 4 is 108. Take away 15 times, well, the cube root of 27. 27 is a perfect cube, so cube root of 27 is just 3. So let's simplify this. Cube root of 27 is 3 times 6 is 18 times the cube root of 4 minus 15 times 3 is 45. So I don't have any variables, so the check happens just on the main screen of the calculator. So on the main screen of the calculator, I have my original expression, my answer. They have the same numeric value, so I know I did this question correctly. Okay, let's try another one. First thing I notice, I have variables, so we need to deal with these variables. I'm square rooting. Now, this one here doesn't have a restriction because the exponent is even and the root is even, but these two right here do. So, can't square root a negative, so my restriction is that w has to be greater than or equal to zero. So, let's apply the distributive property and multiply. Okay. So here I'm going to have 9, there's really a 1 in front of there, so 9 times 1, and then the root of 2w times 10w squared is 20w cubed, plus 9 times 7 is 63, the root of 2 times 6 is 12, and it's w squared. So we're going to go ahead and simplify these. Because these are squares, I can look at my table for perfect squares to help me out. So there's my perfect squares. So over here, I have 9, and then I'm going to break it down into my perfect square factors. So 20 has a perfect square factor of 4 with 5 left over. W cubed. Now I'm looking for powers of 2 because I'm taking the square root. So 2 is the highest one with 1 left over, plus 63, and let's break this down. So the highest perfect square factor of 12 is 4. W squared is a perfect square, and I'm left with 3. So square root of 4 is 2 times 18, or sorry, 2 times 9 is 18. The square root of W squared is just W times by the square root of 5W plus. Square root of 4 is 2 times 63 is 126. Square root of W squared is W, and that will be multiplied by the root of 3. So I think I'm good. However, I usually put my numbers together. So I'm going to write this as 18w times the root of 5w plus 126 root 3w. So we tend to write our numbers together. So that would be a better way of writing it. So let's go into our calculator. Since there are variables, the check happens in the table in Y1. So you can see I put the original equation into y1, I put my answer into y2, notice I did it as 126 root 3, and then the x, and I see that they are equal, so I know I did this question correctly. Okay, now let's do binomial times binomial. So this is where you guys might call it FOIL, or I apply the distributive property twice, whatever works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply like this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do them one at a time just so I can keep track of my arrows. So 8 root 2 times 9 root 5. 8 times 9 is 72. 2 times 5 is 10, root 10. Then I'm going to do my next one. So 8 times 6 is 48. And then 2 times 10 is 20. Then I'll do this one here. So negative 5 times 9 is negative 45, root 5. And then this one here, negative 5 times 6 is negative 30, and it's root 10. Okay, so I want to simplify that further. So again, if you need your square root table, it's always available to you uh, on your calculator. Let's go ahead and simplify. So 72 root 10, I can't do anything with that, so I'll leave it. Plus 48, now root 20 I can simplify because it's root 4 and 5. 
minus 45 root 5 I can't do anything with, and then 30 root 10 I can't do anything with. So it's just this one in the middle. So 72 root 10 plus square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 times 48 is 96 root 5, minus 45 root 5, minus 30 root 10. Okay, I think I might be in the right direction because I see some like terms. So we can simplify these. So 72 root 10, take away 30 root 10. They're both root 10s. So I do 72 take away 30 is 42 root 10. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my root 5s. So they're both root 5s. So I just combine my terms in front. 96 take away 45, that's 51 root 5. So always, always check. And since I don't have any variables, the check just happens on my main screen. And so I see there's my original and there's my answer. They have the same numeric value. So I did that correctly. Okay, let's look at this one here. So we have something that is squared. So first thing, let's deal with our restrictions. Always do those first so you don't forget. I'm square rooting. So chance of square rooting a negative, and I can't do that. So x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, any time I have a binomial squared, I know that sometimes people make mistakes by squaring the first term, subtract squaring the second term. But a binomial squared doesn't equal a binomial. A binomial squared equals a trinomial. So any time I have something that's squared, I write it out two times to avoid making that mistake. So I'm going to write a little note here that a binomial squared equals a trinomial. So you can't just apply this into here. That is wrong. Don't do that. Okay, so write it out two times. And then I'm just going to do that again with my arrows. So first one, I have 4 root, three, four root 3x times 4 root 3x. So 4 times 4 is 16. Oh, and here's my little shortcut. Root of the same thing times root of the same thing is the same thing without the root. Okay, so 4 root x, 4 root 3x times negative 3 root 5. Well, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And the root of 3x times 5 is 15x. Now let's distribute here. So negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Root of 5 times 3x is 15x. And then my last one, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And then root 5 times root 5. Root of the same thing times root of the same thing is the same thing without the root. Okay, so you see, if you were just to square the first and the last term, you would miss your middle term. That's why it's a trinomial. So let's tidy this up just a little bit here. So 16 times 3x. Well, 16 times 3 is 48x. I'm going to combine my like terms here. They're both root 15x's. I have negative 12 and another negative 12 is negative 24. And then plus 9 times 5 is 45. Okay, so looking at that, 15 has no perfect square factor, so I can't go any further than that. I can't tidy up anything else because this is a root x and this is an x. There's nothing left to combine. So hopefully that's right. Let's check in the calculator. So since I have a variable, my check happens in my table. So let's go down here. Here's my original question and here's my answer. And you can see in Y1 and Y2 are equal, so I know I did that question correctly. So I just want to end with one word problem, because there's lots of word problems in your homework. Well, not lots, but enough that we should go over one. So I want to know what the volume of the following object is. So we're going back to junior high. Hopefully you guys remember this as a triangular prism. Now a triangular prism, if one of the faces of a prism is a triangle, it must be the base. So the volume for a triangular prism is length times width times height divide by 2. Divide by 2 because it's a triangle and area of a triangle is base times height divide by 2. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So I have volume equals length, width, and height. So I'm going to call this one the height because the triangle becomes the base. This is the base. And then that height would come up. Okay. So I'll call this one the length and I'll call this one the width. These really don't matter here. And we're multiplying everything together. So it doesn't really matter. 
So 2 root 3 times 3 root 5 times 7 root 15. All divided by my caramba, what's happening here? Okay. My uh, computer has a mind of its own because I'm clear, I swear to you, I am not scribbling on my own screen here. Okay, let's stop that. There we are. Okay, so let's divide all of this by 2. So volume equals. Let's multiply all our numbers together. So we have 2 times 3 times 7 is 42. And then let's multiply all our roots together. So 3 times 5 times 15 is 225 all over 2. Well, 225 is itself a perfect square. And the square root of 225 is 15. So really what I'm going to have here is 42 times 15 divided by 2. So we're going to go 42 times 15 divided by 2. And I'm going to get a final volume of 315. Now, this is a word problem, so I do need units, but notice in my diagram, I didn't give any units. So I'm going to write down that whatever my units are, they have to be cubed. So remember, volume has cubic units. So really important that you state that at the end. So I just wanna end by telling you that math is all around you, even in nature, as illustrated by this tree with square roots. So you guys can go on and do your practice questions in my notes and in the textbook. I hope this video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.